On behalf of Digital Commerce 360, I'd like to really thank Alibaba for having me here today. And <laughs> the point of what I'm going to talk about here today is I'm not a consultant, I'm not a seller, I'm not a buyer. What I am, though, is I am a journalist and a market research analyst who has been around since the very beginning of e-commerce. So yeah, dinosaurs still roam the earth, and I'm one of them. So my point is, I go back to the foundation of B2C e-commerce in 1998 when we launched a magazine called Internet Retailer. So my colleagues and I, for the last 20 odd years, have been spending every single day talking with people like you, asking what's new, what's ahead, what's the problem, what's beyond that. And then on the B2B side, my colleagues and I, once again, dinosaurs roam the earth, we go back to the year 2000. Yes, I go back to something called the dot-com crash. And that was when the gestation of B2B commerce or linking business buyers to business sellers kind of be, uh, began in its, its initial offering. Now, of course, way back then, there was no such technology like this. And a lot of initiatives, of course, crashed and burned, but not all. So out of the ashes of that start, over the next 20 odd years until 2020, when we all got locked down or at home, you began seeing gestations of B2B commerce moving along in fits and starts. You saw the, 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 the iteration of marketplaces, including Alibaba, Alibaba, if you will, moving along in bits and starts. But all my point is that for the 20 plus years leading up to the pandemic, it was still business as usual, the old fashioned way for B2B buyers, B2B sellers. Now, old news, the pandemic changed things, of course it did. Supply chain disruption hit, you've been there, you know that, old news. But what happened coming out of 2020 are sea changes that put B2B e-commerce on the map and more mainstream than ever before. And my point is, is twofold. Number one, I'll give you a couple of quick macro numbers just so you know the size of this. But the point here is not to show you how big a market is. My point here this morning is to show you what this market, what these challenges, and what this opportunity kind of means for you. So all in, U.S. manufacturing and U.S. distribution is about an $18 trillion business. That's how big everything is between what we make and what we buy and what we sell. Of that total, $6 trillion in some way, shape, or form goes from business buyer to business seller electronically. Six trillion bucks. Now, two-thirds of that is dominated by something called electronic data interchange, which some people call a delivery mechanism, some people call a format, some people call a sales channel. Whatever it's called, two-thirds of the pipeline today, as it has been for years, has been dominated by electronic data interchange. But the sea change occurred in B2B e-commerce. So last year, by our count, and I measure this every single year, B2B e-commerce just in the United States is $1.6 trillion, not B, that's T, that's a trillion dollars. And that market is growing by 18% a year. So in contrast, if you look at Department of Commerce overall manufacturing and distribution sales, it's flatlining or it's declining only because we're in kind of these uncertain economic times. But the mainstay coming out of business today is the growth of B2B e-commerce. So no, it's no longer fits and starts. It is now very mature and the main way that business buyers will do business with business sellers going forward. So my point here is there's a lot of maturity that's been around but there's a lot more maturity that's been very fast gelling in the last two or three years. So, what are the challenges? What are the solutions? What, are, what is the top of mind with B2B buyers when it comes to B2B sellers today? I can sum that up in one word, marketplaces. 
And that's why you're here, because you're in the marketplace business. But I have never seen a faster growing channel since I started covering e-commerce in B2C and B2B in 1998. I have never seen a faster growing channel than marketplaces in the US and globally. Now, what does that mean? Uh, five years ago, well, let, let's, let's go, let's go, I'll, I'll go the way back machine. In the year 2000, you probably had eight to nine different marketplaces that came out of, you know, the dot-com crash that made it. And they're still around. They made it in automotive supplies, they made it in healthcare, they made it in, uh, in, uh, uh, in uh, aerospace parts. Boeing, if you will, is a pioneer in all this stuff. So my point is, marketplaces were a handful that grow to, that, that were around for 20 years, operating kind of like Pluto out there. And, and I don't think Pluto's a planet anymore. If, I think we didn't name it. But anyway, my point is, come lockdown time, when supply chain disappeared, when the traditional way of doing business disappeared, when you know people like me began retiring in droves, what that did was to create a sea change in how fast e-commerce is permeating across our economy, how fast it's permeating about how companies do business with one another, of course, that changed. But how fast did it change? It changed because marketplaces came of age. And today, in addition to, you know, folks like Alibaba or, or, or commercial platforms like Amazon Business or eBay, if you will, I kind of call it the big three, if you will. Five years ago, and I count these for a living, there were 75 vertical marketplaces. I mean those marketplaces that'll sell you anything for a jet engine part if you're in the aerospace business to, you know, supplying your janitorial supplies if you're in the MRO space or if you're a specialty chemical manufacturer and you need some kind of specialty uh, ingredient for whatever you're making, if you will. Five years ago, 75. Last year, 400. This year, 500. So within two years, there will be 750 different marketplaces across the U.S. economy trying to find a stake between buyers and sellers. So I kind of call this the Wild West. Last year, about $130 billion worth of transactions passed through these marketplaces. That's a very general number. What I mean is that's the volume of gross merchandise volume flowing through the pipeline today when it comes to marketplaces. So that's just some big numbers to kind of give you some perspective of how big a market this is. But so what? I'm a small guy, I'm a medium guy, I'm a big guy. You know, these trillion dollars mean number to me. Here's what does mean number, here's what does mean to you, which is B2B sellers are investing in what's top of mind with them, which is top of mind with your customer, which is the user experience. And a lot of companies are turning to the marketplaces because now they've got, a new they've got a new venue and a new way of f greeting a lot more business than they ever had before. So the marketplace movement is now very top of mind with buyers across the spectrum, including Alibaba.com. So keep in mind, five years ago, 75 marketplaces, today 500, two years 750, will all those make it? No, but that's the size of the market we're talking about here. That marketplace grew at 100% last year. Amazon Business, in some instances, accounts for one every four transactions. That's the reality of what you're talking about here. But what you really want to know is where are buyers going to find and make their transactions these days? Well, number one is the supplier site. Number two is marketplaces. Our numbers at Digital Commerce 360 show it. Forrester shows it. These guys show it. Gartner shows it. It's all the same, if you will. So marketplaces are number two on the hit parade of where B2B buyers are going to source, get, find, and get products delivered to them. And those marketplaces have a pretty tall order, just like anybody who's in the selling business these days has a tall order. The user experience is where it all begins and where it all ends, and that is the biggest single challenge for a lot of companies, big, small, and otherwise today, whether you're on a marketplace or not. And the reason for that is because two distinct trends happened coming out of COVID. Number one, old guys like me retired, 
Old guys like me who kind of like to kind of do business the old-fashioned way, we're fast disappearing, I'm afraid to say. Replacing it is a new generation of not just a single purchasing manager who is 30s, 40s, kind of prime, kind of prime career age, if you will. More importantly, B2B buyers today, maybe at a solo company or a solo proprietorship, it's, it's, it's one person, you know, who's got the checkbook and, um, and the keys to kind of order things online. But more importantly, our research shows that it's teams of buyers. It's teams of digital first buyers that are looking to marketplaces to have what they want, when they want it, how they want it, simple as that. So these teams of B2B buyers are, tend to be made up of three to seven to up to 10 different parts of the team. And that team is not just procurement, and that team is not just supply chain, and that team is not just e-commerce. It could be a diverse team that includes finance, marketing, e-com, sales, procurement, supply chain, pretty much all the, all the major parts of the food group inside an organization today, that who's, make, that who's making up the digital buying team. And these teams are very, very, very picky. So I talked about the user experience. Research shows that these teams of buyers will go to at least three to 10 sites first to check you out to see if you have what they want and to see if you have, do you have what they need, and to see if, they, if what you offer in the terms of the user experience is what they want. So there's a lot of pre-research going on, or I call it tire kicking. And uh, very, is it called, you know, Nixon had, had, a, had an old term called the silent majority, same thing here. What these teams of buyers do is they do their research way ahead of time. They all take months to do it. And they look on average 10 different sites before they'll give that, 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 that website or that marketplace a try. So recap, three, three to 10 buying teams, all of which are digital first customers, they go from anywhere to three to five to 10 sites to find out before they'll even place a transaction with you, marketplace or otherwise, if you have what they want when they need it, the pricing plus anything else they might want. So they're a picky bunch. They've always been a picky bunch, but, be now, but now because it's digital first, they are an extremely picky bunch. So what I'm showing you here with some of my slides are the breakdown of who these buyers are. And because they're digital buying teams spread across diverse organizations, what they want today is more of an easier user experience. And of course, that's easier said than done. So, you know, I was very pleased and actually very excited to see that the tools that they presented yesterday here because that's one-stop shop. And that's what your B2B buyers want today. So they're not gonna settle for just if you have it in stock. They're not gonna settle for just if you have it uh, with a good price. What they want is the old enchilada. They want it all. They want the content. They want the pricing, they want the inventory, they want to, to know that you've got the tools and the platforms to do custom work, if you will. And then one of the biggest headaches for a lot of people out there still today is logistics and transparency into logistics and becoming a trustworthy, a, a trustworthy partner when they don't quite know who you are. So, that's just kind of where these digital first buying teams are going. But now where are they going? As I mentioned, our research, Forrester, Gartner, Alibaba, it's all the same. Number one place they go to, well of course they start their search on the web, duh. Uh, but then they'll go to a supplier site first. My numbers show three fourths of all buyers begin their journey you know, on a supplier website, but guess what? My takeaway stat for today is 65%, 65% of those buyers now begin their search for what they want on a marketplace, Alibaba included. That's an amazing stat. I have never seen that fast a, uh, manifestation going to a new channel in so short of time that I did with this, if you will. So my point to you is that digital buying teams want the user experience, they're going more and more to marketplaces, and my numbers show that when they find a marketplace they like, 
that they might do up to 50% of all their sourcing and buying through that marketplace. That tells you who's ahead of the curve and who's behind the curve. So I'm kind of giving you some background here and you'll have this slide deck to kind of delve into. So I'm not a big, I'm not a big slide reader. I'm kind of trying to give you the takeaways of where B2B e-commerce is headed. And one of the places that's definitely headed is marketplace growth. So what's ahead for you? What are the challenges for you? What does all this mean to you? What's this guy yakking about? Here's what it means to you. B2B marketplace success, and frankly, B2B success e-commerce-wise in general, is not the technology. It's not the technology. The technology is the enabler. So where a lot of companies struggle to get it wrong is they don't think through the strategy of e-commerce technology or marketplaces that's right for them. They might try a little bit here, a little bit there, but they don't think through the entire food chain. And for companies that do that, and there's more and more companies kind of thinking through what this means for them, when they have the marketplace game plan down, that's where the prosperity and the success begins. And that's where the repeat transactions begin. Because what you're seeing in the next four or five, six years is you're going to see traditional distribution companies like a Granger, an MRO, a uh, supplier, if you will, 12 billion. Maybe, maybe you heard of Granger, maybe you didn't, but they're pretty well known. Traditional, traditional distribution companies, their next major competitor is from folks like here, Alibaba, is from marketplaces. Why is that? Because marketplaces are hearing what your customers want, which is price, transparency, personalization, supply chain ease of use, if you will, logistics, easy delivery, complete transparency throughout the process, customer service, all of that is what they want, and guess what? There are billions of dollars flowing into marketplaces. They're going to try and get that right. Exometry does manufacturing services. That's an example, a publicly traded example, if you will. Example after example after example are going to replace or at least get traditional distribution companies who have done business the same way for 100 years, 50 years, 60 years. The marketplaces can bring together large groups of buyers large groups of sellers. So my point is the digital buyer out there gets what they want, which is one-stop shopping for technology, like the good folks here talked about yesterday. But more importantly, one-stop shopping for what they want for the user experience, you know, the sourcing, the pricing, the inventory, and the delivery, if you will. So that's where the future is. That's where the opportunity is. But the biggest challenges are the ones that never, ever change, which is basic blocking and tackling is what it takes to succeed in e-commerce. You folks know that. So, you know, you got a good technology partner here in Alibaba. They're going to help you with all kinds of things. That's great. What does that do for you? Well, the customers that we talk to and the manufacturers and distribution companies, the B2B buyers and B2B sellers that I talk to every single day and ask, and ask, them, how it, ask them how it's going, they don't want an Amazon experience, they don't want B2C experience. What they want is plain and very simple, which is make it easy, make it, make it more efficient to do my job, get me home quicker, and deliver what you promised. Those are the four. So that hasn't changed since the dawn of time for business. It most certainly has not changed since the dawn of time for e-commerce, but do what you do. Know your customers, know what they want, Put the strategy in that's right for you. Make sure you include the fact that marketplaces are the fastest growing B2B channel that buyers look to today. And that market share for B2B commerce through marketplaces is going to do nothing but increase. So you're onto something here. A lot of your comrades, a lot of companies aren't on marketplaces just yet. But guess what? You folks are. So three and four capture their own, their own sales here, if you will. But my takeaway is the future of B2B commerce it's upon you, driven by digital first buyers, going to more marketplaces than ever before, and that is where the future of this particular sales channel lies. And guess what? It's not just one. 
You know, your buyers might one day be part of three or four different marketplaces. Marketplaces are a generic term. They come in all shapes and sizes, just like your customers do. So figure out what's good for you, and you got this thing home, and you got this thing home free. Thank you.